Is flying still safe? The aviation industry, which has the highest safety standards, is facing significant quality issues. The U.S. aircraft engine manufacturer Pratt & Whitney has used faulty materials which can cause cracks. Its rival CFM has found counterfeit spare parts sold by a supplier. Thousands of turbines could be affected and need to be checked. Airlines worldwide have had to ground a significant portion of their affected short and medium haul fleet as they await inspections. Lufthansa alone anticipates having to forego approximately 20 aircraft this year. Let's get more on this uh, from Michael Santo, executive partner at HNZ engineering consulting firm. Uh, welcome uh, to DW, Michael. Now, many may be wondering if it is safe to fly under these circumstances. Is it? Yes, absolutely. So I, I have no problem, no doubt, uh, entering an aircraft in Europe or Northern America. Uh, we have a very good industry, which is a very high level of know-how, very good operators. And yes, it's absolutely safe to join an aircraft these days. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, uh, th these problems uh, exist. So why have manufacturers of turbines, of engines, for example, been facing these issues? Uh, I think the key topic um, is already three, four years ago, uh, when really a full new generation of aircraft um, engines entered the market, uh, mainly driving aircraft like the A310 to NEO. So engines with a very, very high level of efficiency, 15% um, plus efficiency compared to the former um, units. Um, within these engines, uh, quite a lot of new technology and materials are, are used, uh, especially some surface protection areas and so on. And um, it's, it's a kind of learning process uh, with, with how to deal with that material. So um, it was quite early to, to bring these engines into the market, yes, because of efficiency and because we want to fly better and uh, more efficient. But of course, we are in an industrial area uh, where we do not use 20 years of prototyping. We bring the engine to the market. We look at them very properly and closely. We monitor the engines. And right. um, what happens right now is exactly what we expect from the industry. You realize there's a problem and you face it. But Michael, uh, one could also argue that the pressure uh, to bring something a component that is more fuel efficient to the market may be too big then? Mm, I don't think so. Um, like, like all new technologies entering an industry, you have a, a certain level of maturity. Uh, this maturity level is going up over time and you get learnings from the field. Um, mm. I think, of course, the pressure is high to fly as efficient as possible, but it was not too early. It's a learning process within using um, this kind of new engines in aircraft. So the majority level is growing up and I'm quite sure we will not talk about problems with that engine within two, three or four years. But nevertheless, if this, if this pressure exists to, to come up with more mm -hmm. fuel efficient uh, components, do you think that uh, regulation and safety mechanisms work properly? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, especially in the, with the Western Hemisphere, uh, we have a very good um, flight safety environment and everyone working in the industry is raising up his hand uh, as soon as something is happening. So the industry itself detected the problems. It was not the authorities, not the regulations. The indus industry itself raised its hands, the operators raised its hands and to face the problems. I think it would be really critical if this um, stop in, in using the aircraft would mainly be initiated from the uh, regulations or the authorities, then we would have a problem. But this is something which is monitored by the industry properly as well as the operators. And I think that's a quite good signal that every stakeholder in that industry uh, in the Western Hemisphere is quite aware of flight safety and do everything to keep it on a certain level. Uh, let's uh, try to take a look at the impact here. Uh, these quality issues have been mm -hmm. affecting short and medium haul planes. Airbus's A320neo in particular, the, 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 the workhorse of any fleet of, of, of uh, any, any carrier, a share of these uh, A320neos of almost 13% of all the A320neos uh, uh, flying currently had to have been parked by the end of August. 
13 yeah. percent. That sounds pretty significant, is it? It is absolutely significant. And this uh, combination of all factors, so having limited maintenance repair overhaul capacity, just as a result of uh, Corona and COVID crisis as well, um, having this impact coming from the A320 engines, uh, having regular overhauls as well, is really um, leading to that strange situation. And for an airline, of course, it's a nightmare. Your greatest and best aircraft and latest in the fleet has to be grounded. That is something which has a huge impact and of course will have an impact on net planning, flight planning and all the stuff behind. Um, and will take some, some time to um, finally solve the topic and get rid of it. Yeah. How have airlines been responding to this? I mean, they obviously want to fly these planes, which they can't. Absolutely. But in the end, um, now coming back to flight safety, even if they want to fly the aircraft, they are not allowed to and they are not and will not use aircraft which are not 100% safe, checked um, or maintained. So in the end, yes, it leads to the fact that although we have a huge demand from a passenger side, we probably are not able to fulfill this demand due to the fact that aircraft which are owned by airlines not ready are not ready for operations, yes. Mm. Are they entitled to any sort of uh, financial uh, compensation here? Because they bought the plane and thought it was ready to fly, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, in that industry, we have the situation that you sometimes buy the airplane or the airframe itself and the engines um, is a kind of direct contract with the um, manufacturer of, of the engines. So, of course, there will be a compensation requests and um, it will be some, some tough discussions. In the end, I'm quite sure um, there will be a certain point in time where we just get a note that there is a, a solution for both sides which is accepted. But of course, if you buy an airplane, you want to use it and you don't want to park it. So, of course, you ask for compensation and that will, of course, impact the financial performance of uh, these big engine manufacturers. Michael, if you look at the fact that uh, this has been a problem for quite some time now, uh, this pressure on engine manufacturers to come up with something fuel efficient, to have it ready for, uh, for the market, for how long is it going to remain an issue? Um, I think really due to the fact that um, we, we have some kind of industrial step change in here or technology step change, I would expect, especially regarding the A320 and uh, B737 MAX engines, I would expect another two to three years we will have to deal somehow and, and manage a new generation of engines with this technology change in the market. Um, after that, I think we will have a certain level of um, technology maturity as well as industrial maturity in working with the engines. And um, it will come to a, to a kind of just smoother and better uh, way to deal with this engine like normal, normal engines. What I really think, what is important, um, yes, we have a pressure on efficiency and we want to get fly as efficient, as carbon uh, neutral as possible. That requires latest technology, latest materials and so on. Um, as soon as we do step changes in technology, we will have not a very smooth ramp up of, of these engines not a very smooth ramp up uh, in the industry. Um, we need to monitor the engine very properly and make sure that flight safety still remains on top. So with that type of engine, which is under discussion right now, three to four years at least, or two to three years, uh, with an another generation of engine, probably bring another technology in, it could take even more time. Michael, it's not just engines, uh, other components which are necessary to let an airplane take off are also in short supply. Why is that? Um, we, we have a special situation coming still out of COVID. Um, within COVID, a lot of airlines decided to park their aircrafts. These aircrafts uh, have been on the ground for one, one and a half years. And um, the recovery of, of the uh, passenger transportation uh, was quite fast and even faster than a lot of people expected. So now we are in a situation that we have these parked aircraft which need to be maintained, um, get a kind of overhaul. So they are pulling um, supply from the market as well as the operational fleet. 
So we are in a kind of over demand right now, which was not calculated or not seen very properly. Uh, and on the other hand, um, we, we do not have the full capacity back, whether it is from personal um, within the shops, uh, within the industry, and whether it is just raw material or material supply. And that is really, in, in I would say, most of the facts due to COVID impact. And of course, due to the fact that the uh, big aircraft OEMs are still on a ramp up uh, with their programs. So the demand for aircraft is still huge. And this, this combination of factors lead to the fact that we um, are short of some materials in, in the industry right now. Michael Santo, executive partner at h &Z Engineering Consultancy. Michael, thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye.